Um, I'm Nicole Lezen, and I'm joined by my colleague, Nicole Young. Welcome, everyone. We are local consultants who facilitate the countywide initiative called CORE, which I'll explain in just a moment. And we want to welcome all of you to um, a, a session introducing something that we're very excited about, the, um, the Virtual Facilitation Academy, which we hope will really increase the local capacity for doing exactly what we're doing today, using these virtual tools to gather people together and, uh, and gain skills and information and share what we already know and want others to know. So we welcome you and we'll get started here in just a second. I'm gonna share my screen as we move along, but please keep an eye on the chat for information and feel free to use that or, or some of the other tools I'm gonna to describe in just a moment to, uh, to share your questions or, or your comments with the rest of us. So I also wanna thank Maricela Quesada who is doing live translation for us today and many other times as well. It's a huge effort to do that, to concentrate and, and keep all of the words flying in two different languages. So thank you, Maricela. We also um, have, because of her skills, we have the opportunity to share information in the chat and she will translate any questions you may have in Spanish. You can provide those in the chat and she will translate them into English for us to try to address during the session. So let me go over some of the basics of Zoom one more time in case you weren't here when we did this earlier. So the first thing to remember is that you can uh, mute and unmute yourself in the lower left-hand corner and use the same for the video um, to turn your cameras on and off. We also have options for opening the participants list, selecting the language channel in English or Spanish to take advantage of the live translation. If you are listening in Spanish, we encourage you to mute the original audio so that you're only hearing one thing at a time. We're also asking everyone to hover over their names and rename themselves by adding English, Spanish, or bilingual to your name, as we have shown here. That helps us know who's on the call and how many Spanish speakers are in the Spanish channel. There's also in that same participants button, the opportunity to use some of these symbols, the raised hand, the check mark for agreement, the cross for disagreement, or asking us to move more quickly or slowly as we're speaking. So please feel free to use those as well if that's easier for you. There are also some other reactions in the bottom uh, bar there that you can use, thumbs up and so forth. If you open up the chat, you can send a message to everyone or you can send it to an individual or one of the Nicoles if you're having any difficulty at all. So let's go ahead and get started. For those of you who are new to these CORE Coffee Chats, CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. It's a countywide effort that was started by the city and county of Santa Cruz a few years ago to support the funding for different kinds of services from nonprofits across the county. And it started out as a funding model, but we have really worked hard to understand and talk about it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well being across the county using this results based collective impact approach that responds to a wide variety of community needs. With input from all kinds of agencies, groups, and individuals across the county. We've developed the core mission and vision statements that you see here. And all of the core efforts have equity at the center to remind us and illustrate that without addressing some of the structural disparities and inequities that are in our county and across the country, we can't hope to achieve some of the equitable health and well being that is our shared goal. By equitable health and well being, we mean equal opportunities to achieve these eight core conditions that you see here, again with equity in the center. And the main thing about these is that they are all connected to each other. So, um, without health and wellness, we can't really enjoy lifelong learning and education. We can't achieve economic security and mobility. We need thriving families connected to different parts of their community able to uh, breathe healthy air and enjoy a healthy environment. We need safety and justice for everyone and stable, affordable housing and shelter. 
in order to have all of these core conditions reinforcing each other. And we want equitable health and well being to be achievable regardless of your race and ethnicity, your gender identity, your zip code, um, anything else that may define you. That shouldn't affect your ability and your, your opportunities to achieve equitable health and well being. This core coffee chat and the longer core conversations that some of you may have participated in are part of an umbrella that we're calling the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. And that's just another way to share the kind of learning and capacity building that exists in our county that we hope to build on today and, and going forward. So we're very glad that you're here to share that with us today. And this is a particular application of a skill to, to facilitate the virtual meetings that have been part of our lives since last March um, on a daily basis for many of us and probably will be with us for a while yet. So we thought it would be important to, uh, to share what we've been learning and we continue to learn. We learn something new about virtual facilitation every time we do this, um, including today. So we'd like to um, share with you some ways that we're hoping to do that uh, moving forward as well. So again, please do take advantage of the chat to share any questions you may have. And if you're having any trouble at all with the technology with Zoom, please send a chat to either of the Nicoles and we will do our best to help you work through that. That's one of the things that happens in Zoom meetings is there are little glitches for the, the facilitators and the participants. So in the Virtual Facilitation Academy, that's one of the things that we'll be talking about. So I'll turn things back over to Nicole Young to tell you a little bit about this opportunity. Great, thanks, Nicole. Um, so as Nicole said, we're really excited to launch this. We've been uh, really enjoying hosting these coffee chats, which have been you know, focused on a variety of topics, um, but often topics that aren't necessarily connected to each other. And so this is going to be really our first um, kind of opportunity to offer a series of uh, trainings that were really the content and the skills and the tools that we're teaching and practicing um, that we're building each week on what we're covering. And so this core virtual facilitation academy um, is basically a brief series of interactive trainings that we'll hold on Zoom uh, for a small group of people. And, and for this first time, especially, we're going to start with a um, smaller size group just to make sure that um, we have plenty of time for interaction and, and hands-on learning and practice. Um, and so we're starting with a series that we're calling Level One, Learning the Essentials. And it will start with um, an orientation where we'll get a chance to just get to, for everyone that's participating in the Academy, we'll get to know all of you, you'll get to know us. It's also a chance for us to make sure that we know like what kinds of devices you're using, um, what kinds of Zoom accounts you have, because oftentimes that is really key to some of the troubleshooting um, and being able to uh, help participants participate in meetings. So we'll do a little bit of that in the orientation and then we actually start the training sessions on January 28th um, and do four sessions of um, like teaching content, practicing content, asking you to practice using skills in between uh, the sessions. And you'll notice that we're starting with kind of covering the basics about Zoom features and settings. Uh, and then we'll talk about designing interactive virtual meetings and different tools you can use to engage participants. Um, and then that's all leading up to a session on the 18th where we'll have you plan and practice leading a live virtual meeting. And then you'll notice there's a two week gap between session four and session five. That's because we want then the Academy participants to actually lead that meeting. So that session five is a chance to come back and share lessons learned, um, share successes and share with each other, you know, new techniques or, or tips that you've learned. So that's basically just an overview of the schedule. And, and now I'll go into a little bit more detail about what each of those sessions will, will be. So if you go to the next slide, Nicole, so again, the orientation um, 
you know, this will be a, a, sh a relatively short series, but we will be packing a lot of content um, into each session. And so we wanna make sure that we uh, are starting off kind of on the same page with each other. So we'll, in the orientation, uh, Nicole and I will give uh, an overview and in, or introduction to what participants can really expect as they participate in the Academy. Um, we'll, we'll do a group icebreaker and that's partly just to build a sense of community within the cohort of Academy participants, but also a way to model and show examples of how you can include uh, exercises, interactive exercises in your own virtual meetings. So everything that we do in this virtual Academy will be both about us teaching and providing tips and tools, and then we all practice it so that um, the Academy participants have ideas about, ooh, here's what I could use in my own meetings. Um, and then a lot of the orientation will actually be, again, like I mentioned, just checking technology devices, uh, what kinds of Zoom accounts, because different features, some of you may already know this, but different features are available to meeting hosts depending on what kinds of accounts you have um, and so, or what kind of device you're on. And so um, that's one of the things that we've learned along the way is that sometimes when we say, oh, go here to look for this feature, not everyone can find it on their device because of the, the differences. So we'll go through some of those basics in the orientation to make sure that everyone is then ready and able to participate in the training sessions themselves. And then in session one, so if you go to the next section, Nicole, um, again, we'll do a lot of kind of teaching and practicing as we go along. So there are certain Zoom meetings um, that you can adjust both in your Zoom web account, um, we'll talk about you know, recommended settings to, to create the you know, most security and privacy that you can. Uh, we'll talk about which of those settings you can actually adjust and change during meetings. So if you uh, wanna you know, have your settings um, set so that you, know, you don't allow Zoom bombers in, <laughs> there are certain things that you wanna make sure that you do just out, out of habit or on a regular basis. But then once you're in a meeting, you might wanna have some flexibility in terms of what you allow participants to do or share. So we'll talk about those kinds of settings. Um, in the registration form, someone asked a question about um, how, why is it that some people can get into a, a meeting and others can't? And oftentimes it has to do with the way that you schedule Zoom meetings. Um, where you might accidentally create two Zoom meetings in your web account and then you've shared one link with some people and you've accessed the link with the meeting with a different link. So we'll cover things like that, that some, cause sometimes it's just those really simple fixes that can um, solve a lot of headaches or prevent a lot of headaches. Um, and then we'll walk through very much like Nicole did earlier this morning, and where to find and how to use some of the basic Zoom features. So again, it's partly to make sure that participants know how to, how to, academy participants know how to find that. And then also practice having the academy participants explain it to each other because part of, you know, when you're hosting and facilitating virtual meetings, an important role that we often have to do is explain to other people who may be less familiar with the Zoom technology, like where to find certain things, how to turn things on and off. Um, and that's part of the troubleshooting. Nicole and I tend to use Zoom a lot, so a lot more than we use like Microsoft Teams or Google Meet or GoToMeetings, but we have some familiarity with those other meeting platforms. So when we can, we'll share information about like, you know, what, how it's comparable or wh what you might find or not be able to find in some other meeting platforms if your organization uses those. And we'll encourage academy participants, like if you sometimes use Zoom, but your organization also uses you know, something else and you have some good tips to share, uh, we'll encourage academy participants to do that as well. So it becomes a real you know, peer learning and group learning experience. Yes, and I would add that another, uh, built-in advantage is that I'm on a Mac and Nicole's on a PC, so we can discuss how things sometimes look a little different, and that's just an accident of our, our two different systems, but that's, that happens a lot too. 
Um, Nicole, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back a slide because we had a request to show the session dates again. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for just a moment and let, let everybody ponder that, that pacing and the, the times and see. We'll, we'll have these up again um, as well and send them out afterwards, but just so you can see those. And then we have um, a handout with um, all of this summarized and the dates. We'll also put that in the, in the chat before we finish the, the meeting today. So this is good, we'll, we'll encourage you to save those dates in your calendar because then you'll see in a moment what the process is for applying and when you'll find out if you uh, were selected and when we begin. So continuing on with the content in session two, once we know everyone is pretty set with knowing how to use Zoom, we all know how to adjust different settings, then we'll shift our attention to talking about how you um, develop agendas for meetings. So we'll share some templates, we'll share some tips and strategies that we've found really helpful as because we do, a, we plan and facilitate a lot of meetings. So there's some things that uh, we're happy to share to help make it easier for others. But again, we'll encourage a lot of um, sharing and, and of other ideas and, and questions and discussion. Um, but then also what we've, you know, found and, and what Nicole and I have had to learn over these last several months is that sometimes the, the logistics and even the facilitation strategies themselves um, are going to be slightly different when you're doing virtual meetings, virtual meetings that are bilingual, um, virtual meetings where not everyone actually has a microphone and camera. So a lot of different kind of scenarios that is, if you're leading virtual meetings, are helpful to think through like all through all of those like what if um, scenarios, so that as you're developing your agenda, that you can think about how you'll handle uh, different situations, or you know, provide instructions or information in advance to your meeting participants, or um, design your discussion questions or activities in a way that, again, allows multiple people to participate. Okay, and if we look at, go on to session three, um, depending on the type of meeting, you might find it helpful to use other tools besides Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever, you know, platform you're using to actually host your meeting. Um, some tools that we often use in meetings are things like Google Docs or um, Google Jam is like a, an online whiteboard. There are other, whiteboards, some that have like virtual sticky notes or like dot polling or, you know, you can use Zoom polls. So different tools or ways that you can engage participants in virtual meetings. Um, but one of the reasons why we cover the session about how to develop agendas first is that then when we get to session three, the kinds of tools that you select um, and how you use them really is going to depend on what the purpose is of, of your meeting, what you know about your meeting participants and whether um, they're really familiar with Zoom or using computers or technology or whether you think that might actually require a lot of time to um, give instructions and make sure everyone feels comfortable and ready to use whatever digital, digital tools you wanna introduce. Um, we've often, or we've had some experiences ourselves as facilitators where we discover a new tool and we're like, oh, that's so cool. We should use that in a meeting. And then find that once we introduce it, like not everyone can actually access it or it looks very different on, you know, a smartphone versus a, a computer. And so all of those are things that are helpful to think about as you're planning, you know, how to engage people in meetings. Um, it's not always possible. This was another question that came up in the registration form. Like, how do you get people to engage with their cameras on? And that's not always possible. Um, sometimes it just has to do with the, you know, device and, and technology people have where their computer or laptop may not, may not actually have a camera or a microphone. Um, they, you know, might not be able to have uh, the ability to look at things on multiple screens and, or maybe they're looking at something on a really small screen. So all of those become important um, kind of elements to be thinking about as you're designing meetings and choosing your digital tools. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, Nicole, 
then again, session four will be kind of a chance to put it all together. And so we'll do a lot of hands-on practicing where you'll then think about um, a, a, meet, a virtual meeting that you're about to lead or that you'd like to lead, or maybe you're gonna practice doing with, um, like if you're not currently responsible for leading any meetings, maybe you could get together with a group of your friends or family members you know, on Zoom. So you can still practice using some of these skills. Um, so we'll actually, in session four, have you practiced developing an agenda, kind of thinking through the digital tools you might want to use, um, think through how you would explain those to your meeting participants, um, and then we'll try to build in some, some opportunities for you to like take turns, practice leading that uh, little exercise or mini meeting with us in the academy session. Because then your homework between session four and five is to actually lead that meeting. Um, so, so again, whether it's one that you would do through your uh, regular work or a volunteer group that you lead, or whether you're gonna ask your friends and family to meet with you so that you can practice this, you know, whatever it is, uh, we want you to actually have that hands-on practice leading a meeting. So that in session five, when we all come back, We'll close the, uh, the academy by reflecting on, you know, the successes you've experienced, uh, lessons you've learned, helpful tips or techniques that you've learned. Uh, so again, a lot of sharing with each other with other academy um, participants. And I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. That's okay. I can look at my slide to see what the. Um, and then we'll want to we'll want to finish with. Um, what is your plan for continuing to learn? Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to call it a continuous learning plan. So thinking about what's next for you, uh, what, what other skills and techniques and tools would you like to learn either on your own or it'll give us ideas too about what we might incorporate into the next level of the Virtual Facilitation Academy. And then everyone who completes the Academy will get a certificate of completion to show that you... Um, were committed and participated and completed all of the sessions. I just wanted to illustrate what happens when your facilitation partner advances the slides before you're done talking. So. <laughs> and the importance of then, because I have my uh, yep. slide printed out, that I <laughs> had to rustle through my papers, but I was able to, to <laughs> find where it was supposed to be. So now I'm going to uh, turn it up to Nicole to explain like how people can participate or who uh, this is for and how to apply. Do we want to launch a, a quick poll? Yes. Or, okay. I think you may have to. Let's see. Okay. So yes, before Nicole goes on, this is another good reason to have a co-facilitator. Uh, before uh, Nicole goes on to explain how to apply, we just want to get your initial reaction to what you've heard so far about level one of the Virtual Facilitation Academy. So does this sound great to you and you plan on signing up? Does it sound great, but you're not sure you can make the commitment right now? You're feeling like it's not for you right now, but you know some other people that might be interested? or you're not sure and you need to know more, or you just still have a lot of questions, or you're just really sure this isn't for you or your colleagues right now. So we'll give you a moment to think about that and, and provide your answer. So again, we're both demonstrating how you can use one of the features in Zoom, and this is the kind of thing that we'll also teach in the academy. And, and this happens to be one of the things that Zoom does and other programs don't, which is one of the reasons why we have our, our default mode always going to Zoom, because we like to do this. Okay, we have a couple more responses still trickling in, but I'd say why don't you go ahead, Nicole, and okay. I'm gonna continue. So one of the questions is who can participate in this? So we, we really wanna encourage 
broad participation from anyone who wants to develop or improve these kinds of skills at any level. And as we keep emphasizing, and as I think we've just demonstrated, we can learn something. We, we do this all the time, pretty much daily, and we still learn something all the time. So any level is welcome and can contribute to um, each other's learning. But we'd like to give priority in this first round to people who are bilingual because that's such a huge need in the meetings in the county. But please do go ahead and apply if you're interested. And if there's a lot of um, interest, we also may consider doing a couple of different rounds of this. So please don't let that stop you if you're not bilingual. Um, we also, of course, need to have everyone commit to the orientation and all five training sessions. We know everybody's really busy these days, but it's since each session uh, deliberately builds, intentionally builds on the, what, the learning from the prior session, we really need you to commit to all of them and, um, and also to commit to the practice part. It's not just the sessions and just learning from each other and from us, but, but practice really is so crucial to acquiring this particular skill. We, um, we consider that even though we do this all the time, we often practice sessions with each other before a meeting. We, um, we really think that's the best way to learn this. And we want you to practice so that we can know what your questions are. So it doesn't have to be, as Nicole said, a work setting. It can be something with something more informal with family or friends, but one way or another, we, we really need you to be um, committed to the sessions themselves and the practice in between. And then in exchange for the, um, the learning in the sessions, we ask you to also commit to supporting one core institute event at some point in the next six months. And we do have some stipends available for that um, because it is a professional role that you would be playing. And it would be something like a meeting like this, maybe facilitating a breakout session um, or helping us do another round of this. Um, that's to be determined, but it would be uh, support for one core institute event. Many of you may have questions about the cost of this. The good news is it is completely free. Um, if we do more advanced levels in the future, depending on the core institute model as it evolves, there may be some fees involved in the future, but for the, what the sessions that we have described today, um, it is free to you. And all we ask is your commitment to, to do the actual sessions and to, to give back one, one session of um, support. There's an application process. You'll be um, seeing some of these links in the chat and uh, an application in English or Spanish. You can also, if you're uh, more comfortable doing a video application, you can record yourself on your phone or, um, or send a, a link to that or a YouTube link to Nicole's email address, which is here. And then um, we will ask you to send all of that to us um, in either English or Spanish by January 8th. And then we will let everyone know by January 13th. Um, we we want to see what kind of interest there is, but also have a size um, session where we can really work individually with everybody. So we encourage you to, to apply. And if we have a huge turnout, we will figure out a way to, um, to meet those needs in the future as well. So I think we have another poll for you based on what you've heard just now. Nicole's putting those links in the chat for, for those who want to who know they want to apply to, or if you want to share that with others, we encourage you to do that as well. So the next poll is now that you know a little more about what's involved, um, what we're asking you to commit to, could you let us know how likely you are to either sign up for this or recommend it to someone else? Okay, great. This is really helpful for us to know. So it looks like we've got about half and half between very likely and then some maybes as well. And I just wanna pause and see if there are any questions in Spanish from the, from the Spanish channel um, through Maricela. She can translate them so that we can share them on the English channel. And of course, keep, keep your questions coming in either language in the chat or raise your hand, whatever works for you.
So I'm going to stop my share for just now so that we can see each other and um, see if there are any questions. Nicole, actually, can you um, maybe click on the link for each of the applications just so people can see what the online form looks like? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna, I've got them on my screen here. Can you see that one? Great, yes. And then here's the Spanish one. And you'll, you'll see in each of them that we ask just, you know, for some basic contact information, but then if you scroll down, Nicole, there's, most of the questions are open-ended because we just want you to share some information about, you know, why you're interested in participating, what you hope to gain. So you can say as, you know, as much or as little as you'd like to, um, but we also wanted to create these questions in a way so that if someone wanted to apply by submitting a video, like if particularly if, um, you know, even though we said that, we, that we're gonna give preference to bilingual applicants, um, if you work with someone or um, there's maybe a parent leader or a youth leader that you know that you think, oh, they might be interested in this and they are um, maybe primarily Spanish speaking with some English um, you know, language skills, but they you know, might find it easier to apply and answer these questions if, if they're just able to say it verbally in a video. We wanted it to be something where um, it wasn't just like we're asking a bunch of yes, no questions, but that they could actually you know, describe and, and tell us and let us uh, get a sense of them in a video. Um, so that, that, option, that video's option is, is open to any of you as well, even if you decide to submit it in English. Um, and we're, that this will be our first um, kind of experiment with that in terms of accepting applications both online and by video. So I hope we get at least one video. And if you and um, it also posted the a link to the an overview handout that contains basically a summary of all this information that we just went over. It includes the schedule. Um, so that's either for you, if, if you think of anyone or know of anyone that you think might be interested in this, feel free to forward that along, even if they didn't attend today's session, um, because we would want people to have a chance to think about it. Probably important, especially if you work in an organization where um, this will impact your schedule to make sure that you've had a chance to talk with either a supervisor or a manager or some other um, you know, person who might be able to support your, your involvement in this. Are there other questions that you have for us about the, or anything about this, the organization of it, the content, the participation? And feel free to, Raise your hand or ask a question in the chat in English or Spanish. So I see um, Miguel's asking a question about what happens if, um, if you miss sessions one or two. And so because this, um, because this academy really is, all the sessions are tied to each other and they're building on each other um, we really do need to know that you would be able to commit to all of the training sessions in or before we um, confirm that you'll be able to participate in it, before we kind of select and, and confirm who all the participants are. So that's one of the questions that we ask in the application form. Um, are you able to commit to the orientation and all five sessions? And if you know that you already have scheduling conflicts uh, with certain dates, then um, Maybe just send us an email to say, I'm interested but can't make all these dates. Please keep me posted about the next time this is offered. Um, and then we'll, or our hope is that we'll be able to repeat this series, um, you know, at least a few times a year, as well as, you know, develop and add additional levels for more advanced um, skills. And I see Gino. 
has a hand raised. Gina, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, good morning. Thank you so much uh, for the information. Um, sounds like a, a, a pretty cool program and very useful, especially um, during these times. My question is um, regarding your content. And am, am I understanding correctly that the content you'll be providing will be more uh, technically focused? Um, in other words, uh, learning more about the, uh, the use of the actual platform for vir virtual gatherings versus um, best practices or strategies to better engage virtually groups um, in a variety of communities and backgrounds. I would say it'll be both, but at least that's what we're hoping to do. So we'll start with the more technical side of things, just to make sure that even throughout the academy that the group that we're working with is all able to participate. And then we'll start to get into more kind of um, complex or um, kind of soft skills in terms of how you then facilitate, particularly in virtual environments with diverse audiences. Does that make sense? Or does that answer your question, Gina? Yeah, yeah. I was um, hoping um, to see if, if you'd be offering any um, information about best practices to actually get the word out um, to communities that might not necessarily be easily reachable, right, um, in, in virtual ways. So I don't know if your organization does that kind of work and if that information would be included. That, that was more my question. Yeah, I think that will be a really good thing that we'll make sure we include in I'm looking at now the sessions. We will definitely include that. I think that'll partly be, um, we'll probably touch on it all th throughout all the sessions. Um, because yes, it's it's one thing like to plan and prepare and be ready to facilitate a virtual meeting where people know how to get there, <laughs> and how to you know enter that virtual environment, and um, and then I think the question I'm hearing you ask is how do you even uh, create, make it easier for people to know that it's available, to hear about your event, to participate if you're not certain either what their level of familiarity is or whether they even have the technology or Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 more of the type of content that that uh, I've had a challenge with. I, I've conducted quite a few um, virtual gatherings through various platforms, and one of the main challenges that I found was just folks knowing how to connect, even at at the easiest setup that Zoom can provide, where you don't require you know meeting IDs or anything like that. It's still a challenge to one, get the word out that, that a virtual gathering is taking place. And then how do you uh, get the audience comfortable with just um, uh, becoming familiar with the platform, so. Right, right. Yes, uh, well, we will we'll include that. We'll have some tips based on our own experiences and we'll look into other best practices too. And then I think a lot of it also will be um, encouraging the group to share, okay, what are the challenges you've all, what are things you've all tried, what are challenges you face, and then do some, you know, group problem solving together to see, okay, what other strategies might be effective. That's great. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Gina. Okay, what other well, questions a, do we have in the chat here? We have a question about, um, even though the focus will be on Zoom features, um, and that's what we're most familiar with, Will we go over Microsoft Teams and how much time do you think we'll spend going over that? So yes, Teams is very common um, in office environments in particular. And so um, whenever there's a parallel that we know about, so for example, here's how you would do, uh, open up the chat in Teams or here's how you would encourage people to 
um, turn their cameras on and off in Teams. And here's a difference between Teams and Zoom, for example, and using a poll or, or a breakout room. When we're aware of those, we will certainly highlight them um, for, for all of the features that we're discussing. But um, it's hard to say how much time we would spend specifically on Teams. I think um, if, if you're looking for um, real expertise and um, knowledge about using Teams in particular, this may not be the right, the right thing, but, it, but it, there's likely to be a lot of content that would be applicable. Nicole, anything to add there? I, I would say if you plan on applying um, and you use Microsoft Teams or another platform like you know, GoToMeeting or something else, if you use that a lot and, that, and you're really interested in learning about that, make sure you mention that in mm -hmm. your application and partly because that'll help us think about like, oh, are there certain things we can be sure to incorporate in the training sessions? But also if there's enough, like if, if there's a lot of interest or a lot of need to, to focus on a specific tool or platform that, you know, other than Zoom, then we can think about like, either, you know, do we offer like a, an optional kind of ad hoc <laughs> session that, you know, focus on that specific thing. So we can consider other options like that. Um, or maybe there's somebody who is more familiar with teams than we are, and we could, we could have a guest appearance or, or something with, with specific questions that we collect through this process. Yeah, and along those lines, um, just while we're talking about the application, I'm, I'm seeing a question in, that came through in a private chat about, you know, if someone's been doing a lot of online facilitation on Zoom, how do, how do they know if they're actually gonna learn some new information or tools in this academy? Um, I would say that the best way to know that is um, we'll, we'll again send out uh, a fuller description of these or the, we'll send the summary of what was on these slides. But also I would say in the application, like if you want to apply, um, tell us like if there are specific tools or things that you feel really comfortable and confident in versus the things that you don't. And if it feels like the majority of what we would be covering are things that you already know, like we would let you know, like mm, level, you may not need level one, um, you know, level two when we, we haven't developed it yet, but we hope to in, you know, sometime in the next um, few months, then we can say, hey, keep an eye out for, <clears throat> you know, when we announce level two, because that would be more along the line of what you're looking for or something like that. So if you, um, and if that feels like too, <laughs> that it would take too much time to even find out, you know, too much time to fill out, to submit an application in order to find out that level one is not a good fit for you, then um, we would totally understand that. But I would think of, you know, level one as, you know, either you are a beginner or even intermediate or just really want to kind of practice learning with a, a group of peers, even if you already know some of the tools and techniques, then this would be a good fit for you. If you feel like I'm, I'm, I know how to use Zoom forwards and backwards, but really want some specific, you know, facilitation tips or, or tools, then, um, then you might feel like it's not, not a good fit for you. And Nicole is answering a question in the chat about, yes, we'll email um, the application link and all the materials that we covered today in our follow-up email. See another question in the private chat about, will, will we be helping Academy participants um, I think work with support people that have limited access to tech, meaning they have phones only. So yes, that's part of what we'll cover like in the initial sessions, like how do you, so it's, again, it's both kind of this parallel process, how like in the academy sessions, we'll help make sure that all of the participants in the academy are comfortable with their technology that they have, the access they need. And then we'll talk about, okay, so if you're then leading a meeting and you're running into the same kinds of issues or you're finding that there are um, people that have phones only, then we'll talk about how you, how you work with that. A lot of that is also, that comes into play when you think about your agenda planning. 
So for instance, there have been like, we got really excited with, you know, when we first started learning how to use Zoom and, you know, realizing, oh, breakouts, you can do small group discussions and, um, and that, <clears throat> that can still work even if someone is on a phone only, like not using a Zoom app. But then when we add things like uh, interpretation, uh, the interpretation feature isn't available in breakout rooms. So it changes, right? The, planning process and kind of the thinking process as you're designing meetings. Um, so we'll cover a lot of things like that as we, as we go through the sessions. And one of the reasons we're doing this is that a way around that is to have a bilingual co-facilitator in every chat room. And we just don't have as many of those colleagues as, um, as would be helpful to all of these meetings going on. So we hope to really add to the um, the number of people who are who are trained to do that and have the the capacity and bandwidth to do that as well, so that um, more of those meetings can be more accessible with breakout sessions. Maricela, did you have your hand up? Yes, thank you, Nicole. I think we had um, also a question from one of our participants. Uh, Sonia Cervantes was wanting to know if during the sessions interpretation is going to be offered. And we also had um, a comment from Miguel Soriano. Uh, she, he was also at, uh, saying that uh, he would have to then check with his work supervisor before he can take a, a decision. Thank you. Yeah, understandable. Yes, we do, do plan to have uh, translation. And some of you might be familiar with Stella Lauerman, who often does interpretation for us. Maricela is also another person. So we have uh, lots of, well, not lots, but <laughs> we have two very excellent interpreters that we uh, are able to work with. And, um, and when we can, when we're able to, we also have um, other bilingual helpers that, like last week, we, in our coffee chat, we had two people that were specifically there to translate um, the chat comments and questions. So from English to Spanish, and then the other person did Spanish to English. So that's the kind of thing that, uh, as Nicole mentioned earlier, that um, it's part of the reason why we're prioritizing bilingual applicants for this first round of the um, academy. And then part of also the reason why we're asking each person to help out in one of our Core Institute events and then I feel like it's partly a way to, to build confidence and skills and give back. And then we hope that all of you then, um, you know, when you encounter people that have similar questions or, or wanting to learn, then feel like you can help spread that knowledge as well. We covered all of the questions in the chat. Any other questions floating out there that we should address while we're all together? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so I will share my screen again. So we wanted to let you know that there, we're taking a brief break, um, but then we'll come back strong in January with a couple of upcoming events that you see here. Um, the Santa Cruz County ACES Network of Care um, has a session on January 14th in the middle of the day. And um, on the 26th, there's a parent power summit in the afternoon. And so both of these are examples of um, groups and meetings that are um, co-sponsored and, and hosted with Core Investments and, and others in the county. And both of those are also um, available in Spanish and English. So there are examples of the kind of the thing that we're talking about where you can have um, many people supporting the, the effort with, with uh, bilingual breakouts and chats um, to make these, these sessions more accessible to more residents in the county. So we encourage you to spread the word about these even if, and, and attend yourselves, of course, if you're available and, and interested, but, um, but help us get the word out about these sessions. And we also really rely on your feedback to 
um, design the core coffee chats and the longer core conversations. Nicole's putting a feedback survey in a poll format here because we found that in the moment we get a, a, a better response than trying to send stuff out afterwards. So we hope you'll take just a moment since we do have a few minutes to let us know how you felt about today's chat so that we can uh, use that information to design future ones. We welcome your feedback at any time, whether it's in this kind of survey format, or you can email either or both of us. Our emails are up on the screen here. And we really um, appreciate the opportunity to share this with you. We hope that, um, that we'll see some of you in the sessions or in other core institute events next year. But meanwhile, really hope that you have a, a safe and peaceful break and that the new year will be so much better than 2020 for all of us. So fingers crossed for that. Any last comments or, or questions? As I'm talking about the new year, it's really hard for me to believe that we're around the corner from that. Anybody else? All right, thanks for filling out the poll, those of you who did. And thanks for being here today. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time.